On today's Try to Finish Something, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining. It's actually been raining for a while here in California, and I know that's shocking because California is the sunshine state, and we're also the giant whining state because if you don't live in California, if it's not raining, we complain that there's a drought and it's too dry, and if it is raining, we can't wait for the rain to stop. And people say things like, oh yeah, but we need it. Yeah, we do need it, but I need to work on a prop. <laughs> and that is exactly what I'm going to do today. Uh, I received the Elegoo, Elegoo, I, I, the Saturn S printer. I got a resin printer a while back and I have yet to use it. I saw a prop in a television show and I'll get to that in just a little bit with a dramatic reenactment. Um, I saw a prop and I decided I want to build this. And I went and I tried to do it on the Glowforge and I came close with a laser cutter doing it in layers with wood and that's just not the way this prop is meant to be done. And it has the aesthetic that I love and you know me, I like things that are dirty, damaged, and destroyed. And when I saw this prop, I knew that this was something that I wanted to make and this was something that I was going to need to 3D model and then resin print. I've, I've never 3D modeled anything. <laughs> and I've never resin printed anything, but that's not going to stop me. I am going to make those reanimation jars from the Netflix series Wednesday. And that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So here it is, my first attempt at making something 3D modeled. This is my self 3D modeled jar lid, and this isn't my first version, this is actually the third version of it I made in Fusion 360. I kept wanting more detail and getting better images of the jars and kept starting over. Now, off to the Saturn S resin printer. Just breaking off the supports to remove it from the bed, a bath and alcohol, and it's time for the curing station. And there you go, the very first steps to this build. Actually, th this was the first steps to the build. I present a dramatic reenactment. And this actually isn't too far from the factual truth. I just didn't have cameras rolling. My high school age daughter was in the original, but she passed on being involved in my dramatic reenactment. And this is pretty much exactly what happened. And I'm just going to do a little bit of sanding on this cured piece. I was watching the show. I jumped up and ordered a jar that I liked on Amazon. I wanted one that had a metal lid and that wasn't screw on. I wanted one that had a press on lid and I love the one gallon jar that I found and I'll put a link in the description of the video in case you want to make one of these yourself. I'm just doing a little bit of sanding on this print. Not much is needed, mostly just where I added the supports. By the way, a huge thank you to David White who answered molding questions on his birthday and to Terry Cotent who Help me with some resin printing questions. All right, now I've got a tip for you. I have one pretty big divot in the resin print right around here, and I could fill that with Bondo, but then I'd have to wait for it to dry, and <laughs> I'm impatient. If you drop in some thick super glue into the hole that needs to be filled and then sprinkle in some baking soda, it almost instantly hardens and then is ready to sand. and the hole is gone and it's perfectly smooth. All right, now the jar lid greebly is ready for the first pass of gray primer. And here it is after the primer and I was going to sand it again, but it doesn't need it. On to the rattle can silver. Now, this is not a silver that has those tiny little metal flakes to catch the light. I 
actually don't like that kind. I think it winds up looking more like a carnival car paint job. This is just basic Montana gold silver spray, and I'm just giving it a buff with a fine Brillo pad, and I'm taking another quick look at the weathering on my phone. This prop has a homemade mad scientist look, kind of a Frankenstein-like vibe, and I love that oily, weathered look of it. Off to my usual brown and black water-based oils, and I'm going to go heavy on the weathering, and then I'm going to bring back some of that silver shine in it after it dries, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm just layering on layers of grime, a watery pass of black, and then I wipe it off. Then a heavier pass in strategic spots, and I wipe that off. Also a mix of brown and black, and I wipe that off, and some spots of just straight brown to warm up that color just a little bit. Now, all the time, I'm just doing slow, deliberate places where the grime would build up and then patting it off with a paper towel. Now, that, of course, is just to hide any brush marks. Now, just to warm up the tone a tiny bit more, I'm going to use some Tamiya Rust Color, and very, very sparingly. All right, I've drilled out the matching holes in the lid, and I just want to see how it's looking. Even though this is a total waste of time, and I'm going to have to take it apart after I do this, I just get excited to see the progress along the way. So this bundle of copper wire, we ha had some wiring done in our house almost... Oh gosh, two years ago, and my wife wonders why I hang on to trash. Well, that trash is now part of this prop. I only had to find a place to store it for two years and then remember where I had stored it, and that was the hard part. I'm just trying to make sure that my modeled holes will fit the wire, and it looks like they do. I, I think this is going to work, and I'm getting excited. All right. Back apart and time to bring back in that silver shine. Now this is Mirror Chrome. It was an ad that I saw on Facebook and I bought it and I love it. I'm just using a very ratty paintbrush and I'm just getting the paint on the very ends of the bristles and I'm touching the tips to the prop to make tons of tiny little silver dots to look like clean spots poking through the grime. I'm basically stippling the shine back into the silver and this paint is great. All right, that looks like a believable metal piece. It, at least in my opinion. Oh yeah, you notice up there in the left corner, I did paint the jar lid the same way off camera. Now, these are the probes that direct the flow of electricity into the body part that's inside the jar, and I need three. I printed six. Resin printing is different than 3D printing. Six would take twice as long with 3D printing, but with resin, it flashes UV light in layers, and it uses more product, but takes absolutely no more time. I figure I will like three better than some of the others, so I'm just doing some sanding and I'm going to give them a coat of the silver. Now, after buffing and sanding these again, I picked my favorites and it's time to paint these favorites a second time and weather these the same way. And bring the silver back with the mirror chrome. And now just to drill the three holes for the conductors into the lid. Attach the conductors and bend and wrap my copper wires. I'm going to just glue the ends of the copper wires in place. It's probably not needed, but better safe than sorry. And I'm going to take another pass of weathering on the wires too. Now my original plan was to add an LED light at the top of the lid, but the more I look at the show and the photos, I actually see that it's being lit from below. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> All right. Out to the garage, and I'm going to get a piece of that pink insulation foam, and I'm going to make a base and add a light coming from the bottom. 
There are these hieroglyphics on the sides of the jar and then grooves cut into the sides that run along each side of the jar. And I'm just using an X-Acto knife and cutting a 45 degree cut from each side to create a V-shaped grooves for the lines and the hieroglyphics. And I'm just creating some damage to the stone. Now, to give this foam some texture, a trick I learned from Derek at Van Oaks Props, when I was making tombstones, he said use dry lock, and that will give it a base coat that will seal the foam and give it some grit. Just be careful not to leave brush strokes because those will permanently be in there. I was going to spray paint this, but the rain and super windy conditions are not making this possible. I'm just gonna cover it with black acrylic and then obsessively add just a little bit more gray each time to build up layers with dry brushing, concentrating mostly on the edges. And yes, still obsessing. And I'm still obsessing, changing the color only slightly each time. In the show, this base was very dark, but I, I want this to show its texture and to have shape and not just be a big black blob. Now, just like the tombstones I made, I'm warming up this slate black rock step up with some dust and some moss. I'm just dabbing a sponge in yellow, orange, and green, and I'm getting on just a little bit of color on the sponge and then dabbing most of it off, and then I'm dabbing some color onto the slate. I bought some real slate pieces for the movie that I'm working on, and I'm using how those looked as reference. Last thing, a few drips with a fine brush touching up some of the edges. Now for the lighting piece that I created on my Glowforge. I made a piece to fit into the bottom and I've made it with a few rings to build up a round side like I did for my droid socket and I'll put a link for that up there. Oh my God, I have got so much super glue on my fingers. Now, we never see the bottom of the jars, but I assume the light is coming in from some sort of a similar hieroglyphic shape, so I freehanded one and made a lid for my light on the Glowforge 2. Somehow my rings look like they got a little out of whack and oddly shaped, so I'm clipping out some of the wood to get the next ring to match the shape below. And this part isn't going to matter at all. It will all get a cap in my raise the parts from the dead shape will all go on top of this and hide all of this. This box will hold the battery and the switch for the lights, and this whole thing will go on the underside of my foam. I just cut a matching notch into the foam for the battery, and it will go just like that. Time for some LEDs. Going to wire a strip of these to the inside walls of my circle. I just need to solder on the wires. Stick it in the inside and run wires through the hole into the battery compartment. Just checking it again to make sure that it works. I'm gonna brush black onto the inside of this just to give it a cleaner look. No one except you will ever see any of this, but I'm obsessively painting it black too. Okay, not the lid part. I do need to paint that, and I'm adding baking soda to the black paint so that this has a gritty texture to match the carved stone, and I'm making air quotes as I say that. Again, no brush strokes. And once that is done, I add some gray and some moss layers. Now, I want to add some debris, and here are some of the chips of that natural slate that I was talking about earlier that I was using as a color match. And you can see my color matching is pretty good. I'm going to add a few of these to the surface of the prop to give it a little more dimension. First, a quick obsession as to where <laughs> I'm going to place them. All right, another Van Oaks tombstone tip. I'm going to use white Gorilla Glue to attach these. Derek said it 
foams when it dries and it really grabs the foam and whatever you're trying to glue to the foam, which is perfect. Oh, God. Who saw this coming other than Derek? It foamed all the way out from under the slate. Now, I have to clean up all of this dried foamy glue. Learn from my mistakes. The good news is this is a rough surface and it can be hidden. If this was smooth, Oh my gosh, I would be starting this project over. I already did a ton of swearing off camera, and this is fixable. Just chipping out the foam and I will touch it up with paint. And I am literally minutes away from the finish line and almost screwed it up with gluing on an afterthought. <laughs> but I, I really do like the way this looks. But that was almost a disaster. I do think they look great on there and I match the paint pretty good. Hold on. One more drip on the stone. What do you think? I didn't even plan on making this, but I am pretty happy with it. A quick Sharpie to the edge of the wood, and I'm using Sharpie instead of paint in case I decide to glue on the lid later. Blue lens fits in here. The lid goes on the top and the whole thing goes under my slate step. And I think I'm calling my Netflix Wednesday reanimation jar finished. Man, my desk is a mess. Next up, the thing will need a body part in it. But I really hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and tell a friend and consider joining my Patreon group or grab something off my Amazon wish list in the notes or pin to the comments. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something. Don't forget, glam shots are coming up next.